Good morning. Um, this guy over here was talking about the dark side of self-study. And I was thinking about what he said. And I think I'd like to add a little bit to that. So the, um, the first thing is, if you're self-studying mathematics, Stephen Covey often said, begin with the end in mind. So, you know, what, what is your end of studying? For example, if you're looking for entertainments and puzzles, uh, you might go to um, Gardner's uh, series on recreations that he did, I think, in Scientific American. Or you might look at the MAA exam, Math Association of America, the Putnam exam, the Olympiad math problems, uh, if that's all you want. On the other hand, if you like studying math and exploring different areas, I would argue that um, having some core knowledge to break out into different math areas uh, to shed light on different things, um, probably a common literacy, a common curriculum, um, a common knowledge, common background. Uh, see what's what you know. Common math people know, and I would say probably the books uh, at the PhD basic level, um, like Rudin's Real and Complex Analysis, Monkres Topology, um, um, Lang's Algebra. I see he's got Dummett and uh, Foote's abstract algebra. When I was, I don't have a doctorate in mathematics, but I was in the doctoral program at the University of Georgia. I passed a qualifying exam in, al uh, in algebra. One of the centerpieces of my studying was to do the problems in Dummett and Foote's algebra. Now, it looks like he has the second edition there on his bookshelf. But the book is in a third edition, um, and it's an excellent book on algebra. Um, and I will say that the way that I passed that qualifying exam was doing a lot of problems, doing as many problems as I could. When I was an undergraduate uh, and I was not yet a math major at City College, and I was taking um, essentially multivariable calculus with uh, Onishi, Hironori Onishi, um, and uh, me, Ruby, and other people in the class. And uh, I, I went, actually, no, maybe that was, yeah, I think it was Onishi that I took it with. And... Uh, um, that I'm thinking of. In any case, I went to Onishi's office one day and I said to him, uh, how, do I, how do I learn this subject? You know, how do I really get to know this subject? And the answer he gave me was do all the problems. Now, I took him seriously and rather than do all the problems he assigned, I tried to do all the problems in the books. And I went through a, batch, uh, a, a bachelor's, a master's, got into a PhD program and made it through the first qualifying exam, uh, attempting to do all the problems. Uh, the way you really, uh, if you go through a book, you have the material in the section, but part of the textbook is the problems. And the problems extend and help you to practice and absorb the material in the book. So now let me get to this self-study. So if you go into a subject in mathematics, uh, at least as you get up to the, uh, uh, you know, towards the PhD level, they start with definitions, axioms, then they prove, um, you know, postulates, corollaries, theorems. 
So you need to know the basic definitions and the examples, the basic examples of those. You need to familiarize yourself with them. The interesting thing is it's backwards in these books because the definitions, they give examples of them, but where did those definitions come from, right? They came from, they were motivated by the examples. And that helps you to get a little more excited about the definitions when you start thinking, looking at the hard, with you know, concrete examples, and you start thinking, how did they get, you know, how did they come up with this definition from the example? How does the example show you the definition? Once you get those, you get a foothold in a new territory. Once you get some basic definitions and examples, then you begin to solve some basic problems, go over some proofs, etc. So, um, any subject that you go into, you generally get your foothold through the definitions and basic examples and then begin to expand from there. Now, the last thing I'm going to say on the light side of mathematics is someone once said doing mathematics is like putting a blindfold on and trying to learn what an elephant feels, what an elephant looks like while you're blindfolded. So what do you do? You go over and you feel around the elephant, the trunk and the legs and try and get a mental picture of what that elephant looks like. So doing a new field of mathematics, you go in with your blindfold where you start feeling around is the definitions and the work problems. Another person said, uh, from another country, I don't remember who it was, he, he was like, how do you eat an elephant? And he said, you do that one bite at a time. And uh, mathematics is a big subject. Uh, the way you do it is one bite at a time. And eventually the lights will come on with persistence and hard work. Thank you for listening.